Hey everybody, Justin here with Bear Zapper Barbecue, where we cover everything from grilling to smoking and all that fun stuff in between. That also includes smoking out in the uh, when it's flurrying, because apparently that's happening. Uh, we've had uh, we have the uh, big green egg uh, preheating up to about 250. Uh, we're gonna throw some. Uh, Wagyu short ribs on there. We're going to make some homemade uh, pasta and we're going to make uh, a ravioli filled with onions and the short ribs and um, uh, and some um, Parmesan cheese inside. And we're going to use the braising liquid for the, um, for the short ribs as a sauce, almost like a pasta genovese, but, um, but actually inside a ravioli. Super pumped for this. Stay tuned. <laughs> What's up, everybody? All right, we got ourselves our beef short ribs from Snake River Farms. They are Wagyu beef. Look at the marbling. That is insane. So we're going to um, smoke these, then we're going to braise these. Look at that. Then we're going to make ourselves some fresh ravioli, and we're going to make beef short rib ravioli. Let's do this. All right, so in the uh, Dutch oven, we have a bunch of cloves of garlic, three onions, uh, three small sweet onions that are just cut up and, and tossed in here. We're gonna throw in some um, Pinot Grigio, as well as some beef broth, some celery, and some carrots. We're gonna start working on the celery and carrots now. All right, so we've got our bottle of white wine. We've got our container of beef broth. We've got our short ribs here place those ever so lovingly right on top of the Dutch oven. We're going to stick our thermometer in there and uh, we're going to heat this bad boy up and we'll go this way. All right. Ooh, Meat has gotten up to Oh, about um, 165. So now we're gonna drop it into the braising liquid. We're gonna uh, remove this, put the braising liquid on top, put the, uh, the meat inside, and we're gonna let it cook up to about 205. All right, we have the meat in the braising liquid. I am going to um, put the grate back on top and then put the Dutch oven on top of the grate, just so we can keep the temperature fairly, uh, fairly even. And, uh, we're gonna let this, uh, we're gonna let this braise. All right, we've got the lid covered. We're gonna close this up and let it cook. All right, so the meat hit 205, we took it off. Now we're gonna let it sit in there for a while. We're gonna start making our sauce in a little bit and our pasta uh, even sooner. All right, I just want you to see how easy these bones are coming out. It's hot, but look at that. It literally slides right out. There's no effort at all in that. All right, so we have type 00 flour. We have some semolina. We're going to do 400 grams of the type 00. just over. Let's see if we can get that closer. I use this thing for my coffee. Love it. Ooh, that's looking good. Come on. Come on. Yes. All right, now we're going to add 100 grams of semolina. So we have 460, 470, 490, 95, come on, 
Come on. Boom. Don't move. All right, now we're gonna sift it. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, there we go, okay. All right, we're gonna sift it and we're gonna make a little well. All right, now that we are looking like Scarface over here, we're gonna take the back of our hand and just make a well right in the center where we're gonna crack the eggs. That's right, baby. That was my Scarface impression, if you couldn't tell. Classic. All right, we've got five eggs in here. We're just gonna use a fork and crack the yolks. And then we're gonna just mix in a little bit of flour at a time. Wanna really incorporate the flour with the, the eggs and not all at once. Try to do it in a cookie sheet like this that has some, some walls to it. That way we can uh, not lose a lot of flour on the ground and not make a huge, huge mess. We'll see how that goes. Stick with me. All right, so we have mixed it all together. We're kneading it. It's getting real hard. It was a little dry, so I added just a little bit of water to this. Sometimes you may need, you may need it, sometimes you may not, but the goal is to really push it down and then fold it back and then push it down. As you can tell, it's pretty hard work. The dough's getting nice and hard and thick. Probably, probably good. Use the, our scraper. Can scrape up any last remaining bits of um, flour. Probably been doing this for about eight minutes now. All right, we have ourselves a nice dough ball here. It's been kneaded real nice. We'll do it one more time. Towards the end, you might need to grab a step stool if you're not super tall like me. Fold it back and form ourselves a nice ball. We're gonna let this sit for just a few moments. We're gonna cut up pieces of it. Actually, we're gonna put it in the fridge for a few minutes, cut pieces of it, and then we're gonna put it through the dough machine. All right, so we've got the dough in the fridge. Uh, we're melting some butter. We're going to make the, uh, the sauce with the drippings from uh, the, the short ribs. Uh, so we've done three tablespoons of butter. We're going to do an equal amount of flour. We're going to make a nice roux. We're going to drop in the drippings. We're going to add a little, um, a little bit of uh, cream probably to that. Maybe a little Parmesan cheese and uh, make, a nice, uh, make a nice sauce for it. So stay tuned. All right, so we've added the drippings. We've added a little bit of cream and just some grated Parmesan cheese to our uh, to our sauce. And we're just going to whisk it nicely. And then we're going to let it simmer for a little bit. While we make our pasta dough. All right, so we've got our pasta freshly out of the fridge. We're going to make it a bit of a log. We're just going to cut off chunks of it. One, two, three, four. Move one aside, get it in our hand. We just want to flatten it out just a little bit. I'm going to throw a little flour on it both sides just so it doesn't stick and we're going to put this on the widest setting the zero setting and we're going to feed it right through all right and we're going to fold it over and we're going to feed it through again nice 
and fold it over again and feed it through. And one more time on this setting. Cool. Now we're gonna to go to setting one, a little bit thinner, and we're gonna feed it through. Feed it through again. It's looking great. We're going to go up to number two. If you can see, it's getting thinner and thinner. Looking awesome. Feed it through. And as you can tell, getting longer and longer each time we do this. Feed it through again. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go up to the four setting. We're gonna end at six. We want a ravioli right around the six setting. So here we go with four. Let's pull it through. Nice. Oh yeah, that is looking awesome. And one more four. Cool. And now we'll get it to the six. All right. Look at that. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of pasta there. Let's do it one more time. And we're gonna use the flour that was left over on our bench. Whoop. Two. Fill some pasta. All right, so we're gonna take a, a little bit of the, the onion uh, mixture that we have, onion and beef mixture. And we're going to throw that in. We want our, our uh, ravioli to be filled nicely, right? We don't want any lame ravioli in here. Might be a little too much as I'm going down the line. Probably do one more down here. Awesome. Beautiful. All right, so now we're gonna take the dough and we're gonna roll it over. We're gonna press down. Now we're gonna come back down here and we're just gonna really press uh, to close the seam and then press around to really form a nice pocket first time trying this so we're doing it live we're having fun with it
All right. Cool. Now we're going to take our uh, cutter. We're going to go around in a circle. And get ourselves pretty fancy ravioli. All right, one thing I wanted to make sure that we cover, even though we, we use the little, you know, the crimper, um, we want to make sure that we're still using the fork to, uh, to close it, just to be sure. Uh, that one I pierced a little too much. It's probably going to fall out, but you know, the crimper is awesome. It cuts it nicely, right? Crimps it, um, but you, you do want to make sure that your ravioli is completely um, uh, sealed. That way you don't lose any of the awesome filling that you just took a long time to make uh, in the water. Nobody likes when ravioli uh, goes astray. <laughs> okay. You can also use a, um, they have like ravioli molds and all sorts of things um, that you can use as well. Uh, but <clears throat> for this, I just wanted to try and go old school. All right, so we've got uh, our four batches down. Here, we've got a batch in uh, the, the water cooking now. We're gonna take these out um, and cook them in batches. I didn't want to, um, I did not want to uh, overcrowd the, the, the pan. I probably should have used a different, uh, a different pot, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna let this cook. Flip them over. Yep. Yep. And yep. Flip these over. Let them cook. Let the meat warm up in there. Obviously, that's already cooked. We do have our um, our sauce still going. Sauce looks and smells incredible. Uh, with the remaining pasta, I'm probably gonna make some sort of. Um, Spaghetti or fettuccine, uh, fettuccine maybe, probably spaghetti. Uh, but that's what we're gonna do momentarily after we plate up these ravioli. Thanks for watching. Show you what they look like plated. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, that is so good. The homemade sauce, the homemade pasta is incredible. The filling is amazing. The beef short ribs, the Wagyu, uh, I, I, amazing. Absolutely amazing.